Yeah. Fans around the world, welcome to you, 30th year of our little mini series celebrating the 30th anniversary of our podcast. It's the March show. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> We've arrived at that dreaded <laughs> moment. For those of you watching the video below, you can see my little, my little, little stuff in here. absolutely <laughs> trembling with fear because we are going to be reliving. That horrible moment that took place on this day, 22 years now, is it? No, yeah, 22 years ago, this, on this day, that infamous moment happened, which really can't get described in two words. Sucky stuck! I know, I know, I know, I know. To make you feel any better, I've got two other mascot players that have settled quite no sports, so I'm going to bring up Sharky, so this sort of name change, but, um, yeah, but we are mainly going to be focusing on that infamous game in the 1998-99 season when the Sharks hosted the Detroit Red Wings, and poor Sharky got stuck. Okay. So, in case you're not familiar with what led up to this, so, what Sharky used to do as sort of little, um, for like free shot and hearing is, as far as pre game routine, um, Sharky would normally abseil down the rafters. And 99% of the time, it went without a hitch, didn't it? Yeah, you did quick, you were pre work. Well, good at it. And it became quite an iconic thing, as most iconic things in your do, they quickly form trends. But on this one fateful night, it all went horribly wrong. As a part of the pre game for that game against the Red Wings in, on March the 12th, 1999, Sharky, as usual, pre game festivities. Um, and doing an attempt to repel from the rafters of Bethany View Centre, uh, which back then was then known as the San Jose Arena, Sharky's jersey became entangled in the rope and repel equipment, which unfortunately for our poor, for our poor Sharky oh no, left him hanging there for approximately 40 feet above the ice and basically he had to remain there while not only was starting a lineup right now but also during the singing of the national anthem and thank god you were not playing a canadian team because you would have had to sit through two national anthems you had a lucky so you had a little lucky escape there i know you don't oh and also, the beginning of the game was delayed by 20 minutes while basically the crew had to work out how the hell were they going to get Sharky down? But literally, it just stopped there. And um, I know you, you probably tell he's not watching the video version. You, you can pretty much tell he's not. He's traumatized having to relive this. Um, we'll talk about this. Um, the unfortunate event is actually on YouTube. Oh no, it's gone! It's gone! It's gone! Oh no! Come back up, Sharky! Come back up! Come back up! Come back up! I know, I know. Come back up. There we go. There you go. I know. You you had to know that eventually an instant like that would make it wrong to YouTube free. So it is all, it's on YouTube of, of the whole bit. It's there for all to see. Um. So yeah, so go check it out if you've watched this, this the show, or if you listen to my podcast, you listen to it, go check that out on YouTube. Um, so they really have to play the game while they worked out how are we going to get Sharky down? Um, and eventually, they were able to get Sharky rescued. He eventually um, was hoisted upward to a catwalk using a secondary rope. Um, 
In fact, if you, think, if you watch the infamous event, um, they do spend quite a fair amount of time trying to work out how to get Sharpie down because poor thing, he's literally just stuck there. And so, you wonder how are they going to get him down? You know, poor mascot, and he's literally hanging from the ceiling, holding on to what would say, um, Red Queen flag. Why are you holding a Red Queen flag? So that's supposed to be part of the routine. You go to court the Red Queen. Not a wise thing to do. But, um, if you watch the video, I will include a, include a link, link to it in the, um, in the bit too, on, um, on the Grits for the Show. I will include a link, link to the video if you've never watched it. Um, Literally, as you can see, I've got it now of my tablet to watch. Oh, oh no, Sanchi, my cat! I'm watching it, you don't have to, just stand there, look pretty! Stand there! No, just sit still, look pretty! That's the song, though. That's all I can remember that song. So, you see the players are skating around on the ice, they know what to do. Most of the Red Wing players, they're on the bench, and they're finding this hilarious, the Red Wing players, they're actually finding it hilarious. Um, Although, it's not funny, it really is not funny, but obviously every them I've got is used to coming down from the ceiling, it's used to being hanging on the side, because it's not a, a uh, what's that word, interactive or mascot the red wing. But poor Sharky's literally just stuck there, and the, comment, the commentary team, brilliant job to them for still being able to commentate um, at the same time, because this is one of those massive moments where Something's gone wrong, and you, as a commentator or as a radio broadcaster, if it was done radio, have got to try and fill the time. You've got to still get to fill the time, and they do bring it off. Now, at first, it looks like they could still have Sharky fall, because they're pulling out maps out onto the eyes, thinking, oh, we'll just shove Sharky lower down, and we'll. Now, a bit like, a bit like those crap boards you have in Kelly, but that obviously is not going to work, and that would have been. Horrible to watch. Um, Darkie, Darkie, well, there's most places like, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm stuck here. Wrong it is, gonna try and do something with the pants and all that kind of boy can do, try to save. But I still don't get why the hell you had a red wing banner, a, a red wing flag, or whatever power it is. Was it part of your act to do that? You go, you go talk to the Reverend fans. That's not why. Um, yeah, oh. I actually would have loved to have been in the crowd to have seen it. I mean, I know Night Plus 9, uh, uh, Mark Shaw, Night Plus 9, I would have, I would have, I would have been about two then. I would have been about two years old. Um, but I would have loved to have been one of those people in the crowd. What, at this gate, watched it thinking, what on earth is going on? And also, I, we would have how has this happened? You've done it millions of times before and it's never gone wrong. Well, suppose the odd thing though is if you've done it something million times, eventually you're going to have that one time where it does go wrong. And then sadly, you only remember the times it goes wrong, not the times it goes right most of the time. So, um, yeah. So, poor Sharky still stuck. Um, and obviously everyone's still scrambling what to do. It's a poor thing. It's just horrible. Oh, it's just not a pretty sight to look at. And I am looking at you on my tablet here uh, to help you help with the show. The poor thing. He's just like like standing there. He's basically dangling there from the, from the rafters. He can't do anything. He's pretty much he's stuck. So he's not actually making to do something like some sort of wall and all that. He really is just stuck. And the way. The poor thing. Um, but eventually they do get him back, um, back safely. Uh, they ab then abandon the uh, map on the ice. So they think that's not going to work. So then it's now kind of like, well, that's not going to work. How are we going to catch the floor? But the poor thing, he's been there since, since the, it all went wrong. He had to stay there for the whole announcement of starting lineup. And he had to 
stay there for the entire duration of the national anthem being sung. Luckily, as I say, the sharks that night were not so convenient to me because if they had, not only would Sharky have to stop stuck there for the whole Star Spangled Banner, you'd also have to be there for the whole of Canada. So one anthem is pretty much enough for you to literally are dangling from the six from the rafters. Holding a flag, a, a flag of the opposition you're playing at. Still don't get what that is for. And if any of you guys can know what the flag, what shark is intended to do with that flag, please let me know in the comments below. Please do. Sharky should know better than trying to attack and the, the opposition. So now the thing he right with the card lowering, we're going to have to hoist it. So, and so eventually Sharky does get hoisted back up. Eventually. And oh. It's like one of those firemen's lifts. <laughs> you shouldn't laugh, but it is a bit, oh, it's all those hoo hard. Um. So yeah, so they're eventually getting back up. He is eventually hoisted. And over the rafters. Not gracefully, I should say. It's not the graceful of being put over the rafters. But eventually, he's back. He goes up, up, up. And then it's just last bit, get him over. <laughs> Which is not done great, not done gracefully. Um, but yeah, so that. So eventually, so he's near there, he's near going over, and he's near back. And I hoisted over it. Oh, it's not done gracefully at all. He says, There we go, hoist him over. And he's back. And, and he's back. Oh, it's just. Only in shark pocket can you have moments like that when the math stops go horribly wrong while trying to do a little bit of fun. But as I mentioned, Sharky, you are not the only person mascot who's had a little bit of a, have some issues going on over the years. Because um, the 90s in particular were a very bad time uh, to be a mascot. Because um, it wasn't just Sharky who had an incident. There were quite several other mascots. Um, your bestie, for example, Wild Wings. Oh, yes, even Ducky. Your bestie. Even he's had a little bit of an incident. Um, oh, oh, no. Oh, no, he's gone now. With my... Yep. Yeah. Your best friend. You know, Ducky. Even, even if he's had a little bit of a hoo ha, um, yeah, there have been quite a few little mascot incidents over the years, different years. Um, so for start, there was there's wild wild wings incident, which also happened in the nineties. This happened not long before, um, a couple of years before Sharky. So technically, wild wings had his little hoo ha first, then it was you. My dear friend. So, what happened to Wild Wing was, was up in, during the Ducks home opener of the 1995 1996 season, so, just, so um, in a pre-game stun, and this went horribly wrong, which you can also watch on YouTube. Think of all the instances I'm bringing you up, you can watch on YouTube. Sharpie, she can, which I'm going to include the link. Wild Wing, she can. Um, so just let the other two other mentions in the program. I know they're off topic, but it's it just just trying to calm you down trying to show. It's not just you had instance of not like that. Harvey. Yeah, Harvey she had. Um Harvey you can definitely see. Uh, the other one I want to bring up, which is quite a controversial one. Um I'm not sure it's on YouTube, but I'm sure it's up a lot. Um, I don't, don't think it is. Um, 
I'll mention it in a minute, but I will, I'll just put you in the other Wild and Harvey first. So Wild Wing, as I said, it happened in the pre-game stop, pre-game for the over of the Ducks 96 season. And so what it was is, um, poor Wild Wing. Nobody likes a road, nobody likes a road duck. Oh yeah, there you go, that's the clue. Wild Wing got burnt. So, oh dear. So, this is the LA Times describing the scene. So, Wild Wing, who gets dropped from the pond rafters by a guy wire like a bloated Halloween king actor before every dock home game, was handed the assignment of a lifetime, so to speak. I mean, the dock couldn't have been around for that long at the time. Before this one, Take a flying leap over a hellish wall of flame. I know, I know what you're thinking. I know your poor duck, poor ducky, poor ducky. Wait for it, get worse. Without the aid of a safety or a single cheerleading death voice, so it's an acute purple and green fire extinguisher. While we had completed the course, right a hitch. How do you got to do a course? Just basically jump through fire. I'm surprised at that, for that, that you've got a complete course. I thought you could let anyone else do to win the fire. I mean, you see a lot in films. But anyway, fair enough. Without a hit, during practice. But under the spotlight, yeah, sure. With the pressure on, he stumbled on the trampoline that was supposed to prepare for safety, and instead flopped onto the flaming gas jet. And the pretty reason not much else to add to that, because that pretty much caps, caps the whole thing. Um, but yeah, Wild Wing did catch a fire. Luckily though, no, no serious damage had happened to Wild Wing, and he was fine. Fine. I was back out in the stands midway through the first period, so Wild Wing was fine, but... Yeah. That was... <laughs> no. Poor, poor your best. Poor best. Oh, poor Jackie. Poor Jackie. Uh, the other mascot I want to bring out is Harvey the Hound. Um, what's poor Western Conference mascot? You do get treated unfairly. Um, now this was um, during the Battle of Alberta, which of course obviously ends in the crowd we always heated. But this happened in 2003, and this is when the Battle of Alberta was so intense they didn't just stay on the ice with the players. Well, most good rivalries never do. It also extended to the coaches and mascots. So we all, so we all know that Harvey has got that pretty much long, long tongue. Yeah. I've got a lot of one that comes out. I'm not going to try and see that part. Uh, it's got it's a very long tongue. It's massive. Big Kai's kind of got one of the massive tongues on earth. Um, and the Edmonton Oilers coach at the time, um, Craig. McTavish, I don't know if that's right, but no, no, not the person name. He had seen enough of, of dear Harvey and so and that tongue. And so I don't know how he did it. I mean he literally what happened was he grabbed hold of Harvey's tongue and literally ripped the whole thing out of Harvey's mouth. And it just then he just tossed it aside. Um, Mr. Poor Harvey. He's only there to try and get the crowd going. Poor thing. And oh, it's hard. But and he flicked into the crowd. It's like oh my god. Poor Harvey. I if I I would we would we report that straight to your PTA there. Poor thing. I mean, that's so. You can see there, rivalry is going that way. I think that's a bit too far. It's a bit, bit, bit too far. The other mascot incident I'd want to talk, uh, bring, bring up very quickly is um, that violent joke that backfired. Um, this was very, very. Um, recent um uh, talk about rivalries going out of hand well um 
layers and stuff. So this was um so this happened in 2017, so it's still quite recent. Um and this was a this was supposed to be Mesa the Wild's way of a joke, but of course it backfired. So what it was, it was during a, a, a wild Canadian game, and it was not it was a nut and a selection of mascots took the ice to celebrate Nordy's birthday. Well, you know how cute people say about going to see mascots over their birthday. Because didn't you recently go to see your son's birthday? You did, you did. Because um, I still got a photograph from your Twitter account, Charlie, where you were in Montreal at the time we were in Arizona, in Arizona, and you were in the crowd, and some of this, and you did both of and I got. So I've a photo of that and a plan strip game of Where Sharky. So you've had a Where's Wally, well now I've got my own Where Sharky. So I've kept that Sharky for the Rabbit Long Game. So you have, I think you were there along with um, Gritty and Wild Wing to celebrate your, your birthday. So you know if you're wrong with your birthday. Uh, that's what it was. It's Derek Nordy's birthday. So it's less than maths that went down to Derek Nordy's birthday. Um, what? Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. You're all right, so it's going to be fine. So, what happened was, is Nordy was blindfolded and given a baseball bat in order to crack open a piñata that was being held by Tommy Hawk, who has been on the Chicago's mascot. But, all part of the prank, the little joke was that Nordy would miss the piata and instead go for Tommy, who had earlier shoved cake in Nordy's face backstage. Well, oh, not that we can, not that I condemn what happens next, but Tommy, that's a serious waste of cake. You really agree? Even he agrees. That's a serious waste of cake, Tommy. So, so not like and do what happens next. What happens next is tra is horrible. But Tommy, that's a waste of cake. Um, yeah. So then, Lordy, egged on by them announcer. Well, not surprising. They're really doesn't mean lots of cargo. Lordy started swinging with a little too much, much. Cerberus. So what that is. Uh, connecting with Tommy midriff before hitting his firm up got at least ten times. And poor Tommy eventually got dragged away by NJ Devil. Um uh, and Louis. So Louis was there too. What was NJ doing there? No. Louis and Tommy, I can understand because they are Nordy's the bigger rivals. NJ? Oh well. Yeah, so Louis, so poor, so poor, so poor Louis, along with X, who obviously doesn't like Tommy at all, because obviously the Blues and Black are, are fierce rivals, has to, along with, with NJ Devil, drag poor Tommy off. Oh. Poor Louis, the one Tommy has to ha be nice to Tommy. Uh, and so yeah, the announcer kept with Paul, Louis, and Angela Devil looking on and Agnes. The announcer kept was like, "No, do you hit it? Keep it, keep it, keep it!" Like he implied, "You almost broke it open." Now, of course, that's not unfunny. No, sorry, that's not funny because poor Tommy then lay there unconscious and then even dead on the ice, and. Well, the reaction from the crowd seemed fairly lukewarm because, well, let's face it, you know, obviously, near South Chicago, da 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 da. Social media reactions when this video got shared were ready to go in on the attack. And in the pages of the, in the Chicago Tribune were far less enthusiastic. In a common title, Fire's AHR mascot kit delivers a blow to League's family friendly image. Well, not correctly supported Chris Pook, rightly supported there. 
classify as disturbing. I was glad I wasn't in the stand with my young son having to explain why his favourite mascot was just apparently beaten with a baseball bat, to explain. Whatever the world were thinking, it clearly was not about the children in the stand. Shame on the world for that. Over on Twitter, the outcry machine, rape, rape machine was in full flow too. Uh, one per woman commented, how exactly should I explain this to my kid? As a mom, and even as a former mascot, I find it despicable. As a mascot, I would have been fired and sued for damages to the suit. Another said, promoting violence in front of thousands of people and kids. Come on, wild, gotta be smarter than that. And, yeah, children did help matters, well, yeah, they do help matters. Because while they initially tweeted out photos of the fight to its 5.3 million followers, the league later contacted the wild and asked him to basically explain themselves. Well, all they did was, we brought top, we invited Tommy from Norton's birthday, Tommy ruined it, we whacked Tommy with a baseball bat. In front of Paul Louis and NJ Devil. Who put NJ for the oh, three, three day out in Minnesota, hard yet to be here most of my, my time. Three day out. No. Oh god, brawl fight. I bet NJ I was thinking, you are not languishing me with this. Um, the world did issue a statement basically saying sorry, but of course, unfortunately, the damage was already done. Um, it just, oh. So there you go. So I wanted to bring up, I know we, got, we went a bit off topic there, but I wanted to bring up a few couple of other examples um, of mascot incidents that are quite famous that have happened and believe over, over the last 105 years. But also just to help you feel a bit better about what is concerned. Now, let's very briefly talk about the, about the game itself because I have managed to find um, the, the game summary. I know, I can't believe it. I was just so excited on it. So, we, we pretty much have covered all we can say about the actual instance. So, let's now try to very quickly just to round it up. We're going to do, do a little game summary. Because uh, I had always wondered what happened with the actual game. Yeah, we all know the instance happened, and I didn't try to up, 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 up. How did the game actually go down? Well, let's find out. So, let's say it's March 12, Shark Person Red Wings. It was a final score for Red Wings, no score. Yes, Shark. Two. So, it was all, so after all that, all that kerfuffle, it was a victory for Team Field. So let me give you, so let me give you a summary. So, scoring summary, um, it was quite a slow scoring game. Um, Goal number one came at 12.36 of the third period with Patrick Marlowe getting his 17th of the season with a tip from Owen Nolan and Alexander right. Then the third goal, the, sorry, the, the second goal and the last goal they came in the third period at 4.45 of the third when Joe Murphy picked his tip team of the year with Steve Weller getting the most tip. Low on scoring, but plenty of penalties. Right, here we go. First period, your penalty summary now. First period, first period. First turn came at a minute and ten seconds in when Doug Brown from the Red Wings himself was tricking. Step by 13, the Sharks run stern. Tip two bits of slashing. At 8.25, the Sharks Brian Marshman tip out two bits of charging. He's very rare, he tries to turn his defense in anymore. So let's charge us up to project to the The Red Wings at 15.54, Brendan Shenanan steps out to the flushing. Then the final pet pad of the period came 30 seconds before the end of the period at 19.30 when the Sharks are ready to go to that team it up for tripping. Then the second period, the first third of the second period went to the way the Red Wings as Detroit Donald sat out two minutes for high sticking at 7.37. Then the Sharks are in Nolan at 9.23, sat out two minutes for holding. Holding. And also got another, another additional two minute penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. So Owen Nelson had a horror penalty and unsportsmanlike conduct penalty both tied at 9.23. And then the Red Wings at 18.33, Brendan Shinnanan. Back of the box. 
for a tricking of flash obstruction therapy. Then the third, it was all red, it was many red rings, but fast two shot therapies. Uh, Basically, it was even roughing on, on sports like right? So, at 8 out 6, the Red Wings quick throw up on the chart, variety of marshmallows, about 2 minutes at each of roughing. I'm going to assume this was about 50 tops and fighting. I'm back. That's what it was. Uh, the game just said roughing, so I'm assuming it was probably fight. At 40 52, um, Chris Draper and her multi set out two minutes each for roughing. Then at 1943, other sports like Condon prepared to the water to ensure Dave Laurie and Darren and Carter for the red So a fair amount of penalties were being awarded there in that game. Um, Okay. Uh any other stats of strength and or it's final time. Um one set line. Um, no, no, that's not fine. Yeah, that's a really, that's a game summary there for that game. So it was so by the shenanigans, caused by this one, the draft were still able to stay for the first time and get the game to win. So I think we pretty really much have covered everything said there. Uh, we talked a fair bit about the incident, we talked in to itself, we talked about the game itself. And also, we went a little bit off topic there, but we mentioned some other examples. But I just wanted to include the examples in, um, just to show you that the mascots of the year have had their fair share of scrapes, and also it wasn't just sharp. So, there better now. Yeah, we got there in the end. Just to say, it's time to sign off. That is the end of the show. Thank you so much for watching or listening. And listening. Um, if you would like to list, if you haven't already subscribed to our podcast yet, what are you waiting for? I know, seriously, come on, we are everywhere now. There's nowhere to hide. You've got no excuses. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you a look at all our latest reports. This, including everything I've said, all the main series so far. And we'll add bigger the main series our next episode in April. What's it? Oh my. What are we talking about in April, Sharky? Mm hmm? 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 Mm we're talking about the game seven victory over the Bigger Score Knights! Oh yes! <laughs> I've been mean to get around to the chill pod bit on this ever since I started taking the, the podcast to YouTube, doing a YouTube version of the podcast. Um, but when the idea for me said Kev out, I thought, this moment's got to be in, hasn't it? It's got, it's got to be included. We it can't not have this non military. So yeah. So, we're going to talk all about it um, in full. Absolutely. So you are not going to want to miss the eighth episode of our first year's film series. You're going to love it. So yeah, the eighth fourth episode is going to be talking about that game. Just the game seven. I mean, we could talk about the whole series in general, but we'd be here or, but we'd be here until the next play, for the next play, next play off. So we're just going to do, do the game seven. Um, hear the whole series another time. I can talk about this the whole. Yeah. Yeah, that will do. That will do. We'll stop, no, I dropped that down. Yeah, so our April episode is going to be just on the game seven of that series. Um, just the game seven. So you're not going to run with Miss Black. If you get to the time now, you'll be ready and you will never, won't miss out when it comes. But until then, all I have something to say is thank you for watching. And until 
next time we're out on the youth show or my top or top off or as I to say is and so I will leave you now. Hello, George Han here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Don't forget to like, send a comment below and while stick around to watch a few more, go on. I highly recommend it.